Hello everyone, Jacob Snow here, and I'm bringing you a Custom Sunday uh, video where I'm going to be talking about a couple of different classes in Legends of Albedon and showing you A, what their armor would probably look like, and B, ah, hold on, okay, we're good, and uh, also showing you what kind of equipment that class would probably use. Now, bear in mind, everything that you see in this video is relative, okay? Do whatever you want for your character. If you want your knight to be a knife wielder, go right ahead. What this video is for is for showing people who are more by the book, who want their character to fit with other characters of that type. This video will show you what characters of certain classes and types will wield. So, first up, we have here a knight. I'm 90% certain that you can see what's going on here. Bear in mind this is a new filming angle for me. It gives me use of both of my hands, but I'm also not sure what exactly is in its scope. So, um, This is a knight. I use him for a knight. His name is Dominic. And uh, knights are all about the heavy armor. Okay, The action figure that I've got for Dominic here, he's got a lot of armor plating going on. Uh, looks like it's very heavy armor, probably steel or something like that in the context of Albedon. And uh, he's a human. He is from Donyavar, the land just north of the human homeland of Inyan. A uh, long time back in their history, the humans had a split. And some of them went to Donyavar, which became a republic uh, ruled by a council, and some of them stayed in Inyan, which remains a monarchy to the present date in Inyan's history. Knights in Albadon have a lot of armor, so they don't really worry about shields as much, and they use big weapons. Warhammers are one such weapon that they would use. Uh, Warhammer, or a claymore. A claymore is essentially a big two-handed sword. Um, traditionally, claymores are almost as tall as their wielder, just like this one is. So knights generally use two-handed weapons in all of them. Uh, sure, knights can also use the knighthood classic of the longsword and shield, but in Albedon, knights generally, as a rule, use two-handed weaponry, unless they're not mainstream knights. Uh, the knight in Legends of Albedon has plus seven, plus seven, seven to attack rolls, seven to defense rolls, um, making them one of the most powerful classes in Albedon, most well-rounded, for attack and defense. Uh, their ability is even more suited for holding the line and stuff, because it gives them invincibility for one round. That's a very valuable ability that can pull entire parties out of very difficult situations in a hurry, but it can only be used once, regardless of whether you're normal, legendary, or mythic, so use it well. Next class we're going to be looking at is the Sorcerer, Sorceress. Uh, spellcasters in Albedon are not really the up-close-and-personal combat types. Uh, the Sorcerer class, which in this instance will be Sorceress, is a ranged class with a range of 6. They've got attack and defense bonuses of 6 to attack, 4 to defense. And they are traditionally wielding wands, scepters, staves, that sort of thing. Your thumb's about to come off. That's unfortunate. Action figure refuses to hold its weapon. There we go. Now, they can use scepters, stuff like that. They can use staves, or staves, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it. And, uh... This one right here is a Golden Elf Sorceress. Uh, 
She's a very, very cool character. I just need to figure out a name for her that will go with her awesome. Um, spellcasters in all of them are different than spellcasters in most high fantasy settings. Their magic works the way that they think it works, okay? If you're a spellcaster in Albaden and you think you need to say a word to go with your magic, you can. Most magic in Albaden, however, you just point, you will it to happen, and it happens. For instance, uh, if she goes like this, or uses her staff and points it like that, and she's really, really, really wanting a fireball to come out of it, a fireball will come out of it, if she's got enough magic. So that's, spellcasters don't usually wear very heavy armor, uh, simply because the good old reason it impedes their magic. The heavier armor they have, the more exhausted they are from going places, the less magic they will be able to use. Uh, so as, as such, spellcasters usually wear normal clothes, and much like fighters, the only armor that they really wear is their breastplate. Unlike fighters, however, they don't wear bracers, and their weaponry is a lot less suited for direct combat. If you're playing Albanon and are using a sorcerer or sorceress, keep them out of the fire. If you do not, their very low defense bonus of four will quickly drag them to their doom. Alright, um, so we've looked at the knight, and we've looked at the sorcerer, or sorceress. Now we're going to look at the rook. Okay, uh, rooks are essentially the standard rogue class of Albaden. Uh, they start with a plus 6 to attack, plus 5 to defense on their bonuses, with an optional range of 5. Now that optional there is very important. That means if you want your Rook to wield a weapon such as this good old Dwarven Powder Arm, you can. If you want them to wield a Longbow, you can. Or, if you would prefer that they wield a Knife or Short Sword, you can. If you want them to go on hand to hand, you can. Rooks are very liquid in their play style, okay? How you play your rook, there isn't a right or wrong way to play it. Obviously, there are a couple of wrong ways to play it, but as far as your particular play style, there's not really a specific one that works just for rooks. Now, rooks, they wear light armor, okay? They're not going to be wearing heavy stuff like the knight. They're not even going to be wearing a breastplate like the fighter. Rooks wear leather armor by and large. Um, they also wear thick cloth armor or armor that is enchanted to have higher durability than the material it is made out of. Um, that way there are alternatives for people who are vegetarians and don't feel comfortable with the whole leather armor thing. Um, rooks in Albaden, they're more of an organization. If you're a rook, you probably trained by one of the rook houses in the major cities, and as you grow in power, you are conferred with more power in your rook amulet. It's an amulet that looks like a little black bird, and uh, rooks wear it with them everywhere. The more powerful the rook is, the more energy goes into their amulet, the more they can do it. First, they can just kind of shadow shift, which is why their first ability is shift one square. As they get more powerful, they start to be able to teleport. Very cool for very, very cool people. Um, and the Rook aesthetic, like the overall look for the Rook, most Rooks are going to look like this guy. Um, they're going to have a saturation of black in their armor, or, you know, like this, Arcanon, my, uh, my first Rook. Yeah, he's got the long coat. He's wearing more armor than rooks usually do, but it's chainmail. Okay, chainmail kind of rides the line between um, plate armor, which is like, you know, breastplate, or, you know, stuff like that, and leather armor. Chainmail is kind of the happy medium. However, in any setting or in any world, chainmail does not defend against piercing attacks. It's important to remember. 
So, um, rooks are going to have an aesthetic kind of like this. If it's a rook character, they're not going to be wearing white. Okay, that's <laughs> a narrative must. Rooks wear black. Um, they can wear a different color on their shirt, like a, a red shirt, or dark blue, or purple, but by and large, their wardrobe is going to be very black or very dark brown. Now, the final class we're going to look at here is my favorite, the fighter. Fighters are the front line of any party, really. Um, you don't have to have them in your party, but I find that your party will probably last longer if you have one. Fighters standardly use long swords or short swords or even shorter swords. Um, but one thing that is constant about fighters, sort of like rooks always wear black, fighters, nine times out of ten, have a shield. A fighter without a shield isn't going to be able to block things as effectively, and the fighter ability dwells around their way of using their shield to block. The fighter ability is ignore one through five damage twice per battle. Now that is, let's say, this fighter got into a problem with this rook. The rook attacks and she uses her shield to block it aside. However, I've fought with nerf battles and stuff like that. I've used wood weapons, I've used nerf weapons and everything like that. There is a physical limit to the amount of times you can effectively knock someone's weapon aside and counterattack. Okay? There's not you might be able to do it more the more you train, which is why the fighter ability works the way it does, and they get more uses as they adventure more. But the more often you block hard, the more difficult it will be for you to block hard again. Um now your fighter, the weapon the fighter uses is more interchangeable than the shield. You've got to have the shield. But, let's say, man, I don't want my fighter to use a sword. I think swords are for wimps. I want my fighter to use an axe. Go right ahead. You can do that. Um, or, hey, man, I don't want my fighter to use a war hammer. They're really strong. Okay, sure. Go right ahead. The weapon is less important to the fighter than the shield is. The shield is much like it's part of who they are. Okay, A fighter that loses their shield has to get a new one as quickly as possible because their fighting style, the way they're trained to fight, whether they're trained by a guild, whether they're trained by an association, or whatever, they are trained to fight around that shield. And yes, this is Asha's usual shield, but hey, I don't mind using it for another character. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I also hope that it makes things easier for you when you're... Th Okay, I've got a character, but I don't know what weapon to give him. Now, if you're not using action figure representations, um, well, this video is still useful for you because you know what weapon to give your miniature that you're using, or what to draw on your token, or what, what have you. Um, if you're not using anything like an action figure or even like a miniature, you're just using the paper token or a little round token like you would get with a uh, Dungeons & Dragons pack. Um, still, same thing. You know what to go with your character. You know what aesthetic to give your character. You don't want your rook looking like this. Okay, this is not how rooks look. It's more like a crusader aesthetic. Uh, the overall look of the character well, it's not the most important thing, it is a very important thing, and um, you want your character to fit in the world that they're in. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video again, and if you want to learn how to play Legends of Albedon, click on the link below. There's a link in the description below to our blog. It will show you how to play everything on our homepage. We've got downloadable documents, how to play the board, tokens, um, the whole nine yards. And if you use our menu bar, which is at the top of the page, you can, uh, at the top of the page you're on, but at the top of the blog, you'll see right below the picture there's a whole bunch of stuff. Click on any of those and that will link you to the page that has the stuff. Um, please go there, check it out, and download as much as you would like, and uh, essentially learn to play the game. And if you want, you can upload some videos, and uh, I will look forward to seeing what you come up with.
please like this video, please subscribe to our channel, and I hope you all have a great night. God bless.